So we see that, like ordinary language, the scriptures often use many words to refer to one concept. On the other hand, the scriptures also use one term to refer to many concepts. Sometimes these are ordinary words and concepts that have little importance in systematic theology. But often, the scriptures use a single term to refer to a variety of concepts even when these concepts are very important in theology. Let's consider two terms in scripture that play a central role in systematic theology. First we'll look at the term justification. And second, we'll look at the term sanctification. Let's begin by turning to the family of words related to the New Testament Greek verb dikaiao, the words that we usually translate justify, justified, and justification. The New Testament says many things about justification, but for our purposes, we'll consider just two verses. First, in Romans chapter 3, verse 28, Paul wrote these words, For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. The word translated justified in this verse derives from dikaiao. Here and in many other passages, Paul spoke clearly of dikaiao as something that happens by faith alone, entirely apart from human merit. In this sense, justification is the declaration of righteousness that takes place when Christians first believe in Christ and his righteousness is imputed to them. A second use of the term dikaiao appears in James chapter 2, verse 24. There we read, you see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Here, James uses dikaiao, translated justified, quite differently from the way Paul used it in Romans chapter 3, verse 28. Paul said that justification is by faith alone, apart from works. But James said that justification is by works and not by faith alone. Interestingly, both James and Paul appeal to the example of Abraham to prove their points. When we look at Paul's discussion of Abraham in Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, it's clear that he referred to the events of Genesis chapter 15, when Abraham believed God and when this belief was credited to him as righteousness. This was Abraham's initial justification when God first declared him to be righteous by means of his faith alone. But James referred to the events of Genesis chapter 22, which occurred about 30 years after the events of Genesis chapter 15. In Genesis chapter 22, God tested Abraham in order to prove his faith by commanding him to sacrifice his son Isaac on Mount Moriah. James chapter 2 verse 23 says that in this way, Abraham's prior faith was fulfilled. In this case, James was not speaking about Abraham's initial declaration of righteousness, but about the proof or vindication of his righteousness. So it's clear that the authors of the New Testament used the Greek term dikaiao in at least two distinctively different ways. Now, what we've seen about justification is not unusual. Consider, for instance, the family of words related to the Greek verb hagiazo, often translated sanctify, sanctification, saint, and even holy. This one family of terms also signifies many different concepts in the New Testament. By way of illustration, we'll see three different concepts that one writer, the Apostle Paul, signified by this one term. First, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11, we read these words, You were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. In this passage, Paul used the term sanctified or hagiazo to refer to something that God does when a person first comes to Christ, whereby that person is made acceptable to God and separated from sin. 
Sometimes this is called definitive holiness. We can tell that this is what he meant by the other terms that he uses in the immediate context. He spoke of the Corinthians as having been washed, cleansed from their sins, sanctified, made sacred and acceptable to God, and justified, declared righteous by faith. 